There are many weapons that the ninjas in the Naruto series use. Swords, kunai, scythes, sickles, you name it. There are so many of them, there are ninjas that use all types of tools and implements, and there are ninjas who specialize in one specific type of weapon. But by far the most iconic weapon in the Naruto-verse is the shuriken, and as a matter of fact, it's also the most iconic ninja weapon in the real world. We even call them ninja stars, so obviously they have a big relation to real-life ninjas in their for obviously they're going to be used a lot in a story about ninjas. So why is it that the most iconic ninja weapon is so absolutely useless in the Naruto universe? I mean, nobody ever dies to a shuriken in the entire series. We don't even see extras dying to shurikens. And I'm mostly referring to the smaller shurikens and the big Fuma shurikens because those tend to be more useful from time to time, even though they're not the most useful things in the verse. But the classic small four-sided shuriken, they don't do anything in the entire entire series. Now, in real life, there are actually many more types of shurikens and not just four-sided shuriken, but the Naruto series kind of standardized the four-sided shuriken for, you know, their ninjas and their villages, so we're gonna keep going with that shuriken when we do our analysis here, and why specifically that weapon is so damn useless in the Naruto universe, and why people keep on using them if they don't do anything at all. Now, those small shurikens are absolutely standard equipment for any ninja, really. From the lowest genin to the highest jonin, they all all use shurikens. So let's take a closer look at what shurikens have accomplished during the Naruto series, the small ones, not the Fuma shurikens. And also not jutsu that look like shurikens either, because obviously the Rossin shuriken has done a lot. Not the same for the tool, but you know. Now in the first bell test, Sasuke uses a barrage of shurikens and kunai to strike Kakashi from afar, but Kakashi substitutes and they don't do anything really. We do see them hitting Kakashi in the face though, which is pretty gruesome, but they didn't work, so like, they're still useless. But then see one particular instance where they were kind of useful in the fight against the demon brothers when Sasuke fought against the two of them. He tossed a shuriken on the chain and stuck the chain on the tree and then he used a kunai to further stuck the shuriken into the tree by nailing the kunai inside the hole of the shuriken to make it more difficult for the brothers to release it. And because Sasuke managed to restrain their movements by sticking them into the tree with the chains and stuff, he was able to land a kick. But still, it's not as though they couldn't detach the chains and circumvent Sasuke to attack. Tazuna from the other side, which is exactly what they did. And by the way, Sasuke is actually the guy who probably does the most, you know, good with shurikens in the entire series, but still it's not very impactful, especially the small shurikens. In the Forest of Death, we see a jutsu that actually uses normal shurikens to amp the jutsu, which is the Phoenix Flames. Sasuke imbues a barrage of shurikens with fire and tosses them against the opponent. He first uses it against that Rain Village guy, but it's not very effective. I mean, he managed to reposition the guy and he changes the fight itself when they use the jutsu, but it didn't hit him, and the Rain Village guy just ran away, and then he used that jutsu against Haku after Sasuke wakes up from his curse mark coma, and he actually lands the Phoenix Flames on Zaku, which deals some damage, but even still, it doesn't do a lot of damage, and the real damage comes after when Sasuke breaks Zaku's arms. So even though Sasuke managed to land a Phoenix Flower jutsu right on Zaku, and all those shuriken hit him with fire, Zaku was kind of right after it. Now, these are not the only time Sasuke uses shurikens very effectively in the Forest of Death. He also uses them to pretty much tie Orochimaru to a tree with wire in the shuriken so that Sasuke can use his dragon flame jutsu which hit Orochimaru and peeled his skin off. And that actually worked! I mean, you can argue that Orochimaru let himself get caught because obviously if he didn't want to get caught he wouldn't because he was a Sanin fighting against a Genin. But you can see that the most effective usages of shuriken so far were not damage related, they were utility related when Sasuke used them to stick the brothers on the tree and then he used them to wrap Rochimaru around the tree which is pretty much you know the same usage just a little bit different in those two cases. Sasuke also tosses a barrage of shurikens when that Orochimaru summon stick comes after him and he's pretty damn desperate terrified of Orochimaru and he pretty much tosses all the shurikens he had to kill that snake so I guess that snake died because it doesn't really come back so the shurikens actually kill something not a character per se, not a named character, but a summon snake and a pretty big one? I guess it's better than nothing, but still it's way worse than kunais, which are not very effective either, and I've made an entire video about them. We see Sakura using shurikens in the Forest of Death as well in the fight against Zaku. Zaku was deflecting them against Sakura, and then Sakura was using the substitution jutsu when the shurikens slash kunais would hit her, but she was using shurikens in that process. And in the final blast, she actually got hit by her own shurikens when Zaku deflected them, and, I mean, she was kind of hurt by them, but then again, they 
they didn't do much damage. They cut her up a little bit, but she protected herself with her arms and she was just fine. It was much worse when Zaku started to punch her in the face. In the preliminary fights, Shikamaru used a shuriken against Kin as a distraction to make her hit her head on the wall back behind her, which again, not damage related, but it was used for utility, so better than nothing, I suppose? I'm pretty sure Tenten used a lot of shuriken against Tamari in their fight against her in the preliminaries also, but like, that fight didn't even have screen time in the manga and Tenten just lost. <laughs> in the finals of the Chunyi exams, Naruto tosses shuriken against Neji, but Neji uses his rotation and even catches the shuriken and then tosses it back at Naruto, but Naruto managed to dodge them. Sasuke also tosses shuriken against Gaara in their arena fight, but Gaara blocks them with his sand clone, doesn't do anything to him. And then Hiruzen probably uses the coolest shuriken related jutsu, and what I mean by shuriken related jutsu, it's actually using normal shurikens, not something like a Rasen shuriken, which is the shuriken shadow clone jutsu. He used it against Uruchimaru, Uruchimaru uses the Edo Tensei coffins to block it, but it's kind of cool to see one shuriken turning into that massive barrage that lands on the coffin. Literally does nothing to Orochimaru, but I mean, it forced him to block it, so I guess Orochimaru acknowledged that as being dangerous? Now, there were some usages of shuriken in the Konoha Crush arc, but nothing too major. Kakashi is using kunais in their arc to fight against the sound ninjas, but no shuriken, so like, I'm guessing he prefers kunais? But then when Itachi shows up in the next arc, he actually uses shuriken to draw Kakashi's attention to his hand, so that Kakashi doesn't see Itachi weaving hand signs for his water style attack and it almost worked because the jutsu almost caught Kakashi but then Itachi actually caught Kakashi because he stabbed Kakashi from behind but actually that was not the real Kakashi but a water clone. Itachi drawing those shuriken was part of his strategy and it seemed to almost work then again it was not something damage related but utility related. And the next time we see any major usage of shuriken is in the fights between the sound four against Raido and Genma and that fight happens off screen but we see that when Raido and Genma are defeated and they're almost dead, there are several kunai and shuriken around. Several shuriken are actually piercing Raido's back and one shuriken is piercing Genma, so I mean, I guess the sound four used them. But that's the thing, even though they got hit by several shuriken there, they didn't do much damage, they barely pierced their skin, which is one of the main weaknesses of the shuriken, which we're gonna get into later. Now, the usage of shurikens really diminishes in Naruto Shippuden because as ninjas get more powerful, the weapon loses its value in battles because it's much easier for powerful shinobis to counter mere shurikens. Still, Naruto and Kakashi used shuriken against each other in the second bell test. Kakashi also used a few shuriken to hit Daedarus Claybird explosive so that they wouldn't hit Kakashi with the explosion and explode in the air. Then again, this is not damage related. But then there's actually one usage of the shuriken in Naruto Shippuden very impactful and it was damage related. In the Asuma vs. Hidan fight, when Shikamaru managed to drag Hidan out of his ritual circle, Asuma tossed a shuriken to nick Hidan's ear and test whether or not Shikamaru's hypothesis was correct and if the ritual wouldn't work anymore if he was not on the circle. And when Asuma realized that his ear was fine after attacking Hidan's ear, he was like, okay, we can actually kill him now. So in a sense, that was damage related, but it was not really a damage to end the fight. It was much more utility related again. After that, we get the biggest proponent of shurikens in the entire series, Sasuke Uchiha. Because not only he likes to use shurikens even though they're the most useless weapons. He gets an entire scroll and wraps them around his wrists so that he can summon them and have essentially infinite shurikens for his fights. This gives us probably what is the most iconic scene revolving around small shurikens in the series which is Sasuke and Itachi's shuriken clash where they were essentially shooting a thousand shurikens at a second against each other and they were all clashing against each other in that really cool looking two page spread and it was such an awesome scene to see because they were both using their Sharingan counter each other's shuriken and they were evenly matched, throwing them really damn fast. And again, I'm not even sure if they were hit by all those shuriken, they, they would get hurt because they don't seem to do anything anyways. There are a few usages of shurikens during the pain arc, but nothing major used by the main characters. The next time we see shurikens featuring in a big battle is in the Sasuke versus Danzo fight. Again, Sasuke, but this time Danzo actually uses them more effectively than Sasuke because he uses the shurikens to imbue them with wind style and essentially turn the small shurikens into a pretty damn large one that was cutting rocks and it was dealing a lot of damage. Now, this is an anime-only scene. It doesn't happen in the manga. In the anime, Sasuke even uses Danzo's own shuriken to cut Danzo's arm and that's how he manages to cut Danzo in half because his own bird redirected the shuriken towards Danzo, which was a damn nice 
actually seen in the anime, but it wasn't in the manga. Still, I'm counting it here because it's kind of cool. And Sasuke also uses shurikens a few times to distract Anzu and even kill him a few times, but it doesn't really work because he's on Izanagi and he has 10 minutes of immortality. Now, after that, we get the war arc, and that's when the usage of shurikens pretty much dies. I mean, there's still a few of them, especially against the White Zetsuwarmi, but I'm not really gonna count those usages because, you know, White Zetsuwarmi, who cares? Itachi does use the Phoenix Flower Jutsu against Killer B, and Killer B just blocks him with his A-Tails hand, and I mean, he's like, oh, it burns a little bit, but didn't do anything at all to him, so like, pretty useless jutsu against Killer B. And then in the final fight of the series, Naruto versus Sasuke in the Valley of the End, after Naruto and Sasuke ran out of chakra, Sasuke summons a few shuriken with his trusty little summon scroll, wrapped around his wrist, as per usual, and he disposes of some of Naruto's shadow clones with the shurikens, imbuing them with a little bit of lightning, which is better than nothing, I suppose, I meaning to kill a couple of shadow clones. And that's it, really. I mean, the only real thing that a shuriken killed in the series was a snake, and we can count in one hand the number of times they were actually very impactful in a fight. If you take into account the ratio they are used to the amount of times they are useful in the series, this is actually very damn low. Why would they choose to use such a useless weapon then that doesn't seem to work very much and it's easily countered by several abilities in the series. Well, first I would like to take a more real-life approach to the weapons and analyze how they actually work in reality. Shurikens are not known as ninja stars by chance, they were obviously used by real-life ninjas back in the day in Japan, but even if you use them today, they're not gonna perform as well as a throwing dagger, for instance, aka a kunai in the Naruto verse. That's simply because of the way they're shaped. They're not gonna pierce as deeply into the target because they have to penetrate a bigger surface area and therefore they're not gonna go as deep, which is not gonna result into very deadly wounds. It would be extremely hard to actually kill somebody with a shuriken in real life. Sure, you could cut someone, it would hurt, but to kill someone, you'd have to hit the neck, cut the jugular, and make the person bleed to death. Because even if you hit the person's head, the shuriken's not gonna go through the skull. They simply don't have the penetration necessary to do enough damage. And that's considering your target is not armored. If you wear any armor whatsoever, you're gonna render shurikens absolutely useless. Chainmail would render them useless. They wouldn't even be able to penetrate at all. Textile armor would render them useless. And plate armor, I mean, they're never going through plate. First, because there is a limitation to the weapon's design that they're not gonna penetrate deep enough. And second, there's a limitation to the person throwing it. Humans have limited strength and they're not gonna be able to throw them as hard as necessary to deal substantial damage. Now, there have been examples of successful throwing weapons in the battlefield, such as Plumbata and Pilum during the Roman Empire, for example. But as soon as technology got developed enough, people stopped throwing weapons in the battlefield and they started using bows or crossbows. And I mean, there were bows in the Roman Empire, but they weren't as common. Throwing daggers even is not that effective. And when you compile the effect that a shuriken has, which they have to penetrate so much more surface area, they are not very effective weapons. But they were used by real life ninjas. First, because they are pretty easy to carry. They're small. You can conceal them well, and they are silent. Even though most throwing weapons are not gonna make that much noise, shuriken is especially silent because they don't really have any pieces connecting to them. It's just one solid piece of metal. Arrows penetrate and have way more force than shurikens, but they make noise and they're not as easy to conceal because you have to carry a bow. And the arrows themselves are also much larger, so the shuriken fits a ninja. Even though it's not gonna be the most effective weapon, it can be better than nothing. Now, shurikens are not as useful as other ninja weapons because they're just throwing weapons. Kunais can be very effective melee weapons and throwing weapons at the same time. So this already makes kunais much more effective weapons, and also throwing kunais is better than throwing shurikens by default. Now, the reason why shinobis don't throw only kunais is because they're much bigger than shurikens, and therefore they only carry a few kunais, so you have to save them. Also, you want to save some kunais to fight in melee if you need to, and not just throw them. So you have shurikens which you can carry many, many more of. If you see the inside of a ninja bag in the Naruto series, you can actually carry dozens upon dozens of shuriken in a single pouch, but kunais? Not so much. Kunais can be also much more versatile because you can attach things to them, paper bombs, smoke bombs. You can attach wires to shurikens, and we see that in the series, but you can do as much with them as you can do with kunais. However, because you can carry many more of them, then it helps out a little bit. Though if you want to make sure you deal some damage when throwing a weapon, you better throw a kunai and not a shuriken. But then you may be saying, well, real 
Life people are obviously not as strong as Naruto people because they're ninjas, they're superhuman, they have literal chakra flowing through their system, so they can obviously throw shurikens much faster than we mere mortals can, and this is obvious. I can definitely say that yes, if a ninja throws a shuriken properly in the Naruto universe, he should be able to kill the target because they're much more powerful than what a real world ninja would be. They would also be much more precise than the real world ninja because they are superhuman as I said before. So they could hit vital spots from very far away. I mean, take a look at Sasuke in the first bell test. He actually hit Kakashi's face in several different places with his shuriken. That would have been very nasty if Kakashi didn't use a substitution jutsu. But even still, nobody really dies from a shuriken attack in the series. And the thing is, if somebody died to a shuriken, everybody would make fun of that character and the death of that character wouldn't really feel as impactful. Everybody makes fun of Neji for dying to a twig, so imagine a small little shuriken killing an important character. I mean, an extra, I guess that's okay, but a main character would never die to a shuriken in a shonen series because this is just too basic of a death. And also because later in the series we start to follow the path of the strongest characters in the verse, the usage of shurikens falls dramatically as I mentioned before. Shurikens are not weapons of elite ninjas, at least not for dealing damage. They will have much better alternatives to deal with shurikens and to also do things that shurikens are supposed to do but much better. Take a look at how Kakashi dealt with Naruto's shurikens in the first bell test. He literally stopped them with his fingers without looking at them. This is how an elite shinobi deals with shurikens. It's a non-issue for them. So obviously they're gonna be a weapon reserved to lesser ninjas. And what I mean by lesser ninjas is not really just genins. Genins and chunins will use a lot of shurikens. But keep in mind that 99% of the ninjas in the verse are chunins and genins. Jonins are actually very rare. This is why they are called elite shinobi. You may think they're not that rare because we see several of them in the series, but this is just our biased perspective as spectators of the series. Because we are gonna follow more powerful characters than the average ninja is going to be in the verse. This is why we see shurikens much more often in Naruto part 1 when our main characters are actually genin and the lower levels of ninja, so they use lower level tools like small shurikens, which are not really seen very often in fights like Madara versus Hashirama, for example. Only if it's an emergency or characters run out of chakra like Sasuke in his final fight against Naruto where he actually used shurikens against Naruto's shadow clones. But even in those lower shinobi levels, we see that the shurikens are much more useful as utility weapons than damage weapons. Even when you toss a shuriken against somebody, it's much better if you toss it to serve as a diversion than to just deal damage because the damage is probably not going to be very effective. And then you can use shurikens with wires, with your own jutsus imbued in them to do some extra damage if necessary, but shurikens by themselves are not exactly great for damage. And they're not even used that much for it. Most ninjas seem aware that, okay, I'm not gonna really try to win a fight using a shuriken, but I can certainly try to use a shuriken and get distraction, maybe try to open my opponent's guard, maybe force my opponent to block them, let's see what they have in store, what jutsu they can use. Take Sasuke versus Gara for example, Sasuke's first move in the fight in the arena was to toss shuriken at Gara. Do you really think Sasuke thought he was going to deal damage to Gara with a shuriken or win the fight with his shuriken in that particular toss? Obviously not, Sasuke just wanted to see how Gara would react to him tossing shuriken against him. He wanted to see Gara sand for the first time because he didn't see the sand in the preliminaries because Kakashi took him to seal the curse mark and he didn't see the fight between him and Lee. Do you think Sasuke and Itachi were tossing a billion shurikens at each other clashing that way because they thought they would win the fight with a shuriken? I mean Itachi was done really trying to kill Sasuke in that situation but Sasuke certainly was but he wasn't really trying to kill Itachi with those shuriken he was just trying to distract Itachi or to try and find an opening with those shuriken. So much so that right after the clash finishes they both rush at each other and try to get an advantage in the fight. So even if they're not great for dealing damage in and out of universe they're still useful for ninjas to bring into missions for utility purposes. They're not very cumbersome as I said before they're actually very easy to carry. Sure they can be heavy if you have loads of them but they're small easy to conceal easy to throw. It's actually much easier to throw a shuriken than a kunai or a dagger in real life so the same thing would apply to the universe of Naruto and they can serve many utility purposes and even deal damage in a pinch. I mean if it's the only option you have really it's better than nothing. Now of course this only really applies to small shurikens. The larger Fuma shurikens are a different beast entirely. So if you'd like me to make a video about them, definitely comment down below. Also, please like this video and subscribe to my channel because I know you're
you're not subscribed and it only takes two seconds and it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. Watch this other video right here to find out why kunais are so useless in the series and thank you so much for watching guys.